I want to introduce Wapastam, and I believe that he has a short video that he wants to share with you that will be on the screen. And he's going to give you a little brief story, his, his treaty story, and one that's centered on reconciliation. So with that, Wapastim, where are you? Okay. Tense. Wapasam Kakosa Netakosa Kinepoat Harper Nintinskath. Good morning. My name is Wapastam. I'm from Barons River First Nation and I'm a sixteen year old Neheo Skapwish. Before I start my presentation, I would like to share a short video that I made just this year. My name is Wapastam. I attend St. Boniface Diocesan High School. During the spring break of twenty seventeen I was able to go to El Salvador. Again, one year later, in 2018, I was able to go back. I realized on my trip down there that reconciliation still has a long way to come. The story of my people and the people of El Salvador is one of incredible struggle and resilience. On this trip, I learned about the genocide that took place in El Salvador to the Nahuaya people and that those same things happened to my people. Traditional lands were taken, massacres were carried out, and people suffered. Another thing that I learned that was very important is the willingness both my people and the Nahuaya people have to share knowledge and to build relationships for the greater good. I realized that in order to have reconciliation, all people must invest and be involved equally. It was apparent when Pope Francis could not apologize for the atrocities at residential school that something was wrong. In order for it to happen, reconciliation must be initiated within the diocese churches, church-run schools, and faith-run social justice groups. As in the 94 Calls to Action put together by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, under Call to Action 48, Section 1, it states that in order to start reconciliation, it begins in those places. As well, it states to respect Indigenous people's right to practice, develop, and teach their own spiritual traditions, customs, and ceremonies. St. Boniface Diocesan High School has not taken any real initiative or effort to recognize Indigenous people's spirituality, customs, or ceremonies respectfully and without putting full appreciation and respect in their institution. This is considered hidden discrimination and oppression under the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. There is an apparent lack of education, understanding, and acceptance. In order for reconciliation to go anywhere, people must share the truth. It's hard, but it needs to be done. It's something that I learned because I realized that not just for my people or the Nahuaya people to reconcile with their oppressors, but all indigenous people around the world. Things like residential schools, the civil war in El Salvador, or the doctrine of discovery which were the cause of the people in Africa to be enslaved, or any other indigenous person who were not Christian to face genocide must be put on the table for the nations of the world to recognize and accept to build a better relationship for the people now and for the next seven generations. Reconciliation must start with those who you can share laughs with, walk the same path with, or listen to music while playing games under the stars. Reconciliation to me is the ability for all people to live in peace and harmony with equal opportunity while sharing truth, humility, honesty, wisdom, respect, courage, and love. So to give a bit of uh, background on the video, uh, I, was, I traveled to El Salvador this spring break and I met with the indigenous people down there and we discussed a lot about our histories and the stuff that we've gone through as indigenous people. And uh, one of the things that we talked about was the fact of how our youth have troubles 
in our day-to-day -day lives describing who we are to non-First Nations people. We always get shot down. I know that I have when I try and share my history or my beliefs. It's something that's common, not just here in Canada, but in El Salvador. So, I've been asked here to be here this morning to speak on reconciliation and what it means to me as a youth. Reconciliation in the dictionary means the restoration of friendly relations or to restore it to friendly terms. As youth, we need to do our part in decolonization and reconciliation, to be a part of the empowerment process, eliminating discrimination and racism, and rebuilding our institutions based on our values, our traditions, and our ways. As we are aware, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission investigated and dealt with the treatment of residential school students and survivors. The recommendations stemming from the commission, known as the calls to action, were mostly directed to the governments concerning Indigenous peoples. As a youth, I believe the reconciliation movement is a good thing because it acknowledges the damages that have been inflicted on our people. The damage has been huge because it continues today to impact youth and will continue if we don't do anything about it. Nevertheless, the long path toward reconciliation has started. There's been many truth and reconciliation commissions around the world that look into the atrocities on human life. Commissions are set up to look into different kinds of situations, such as the effects of war on indigenous people, or even the deliberate killing of indigenous peoples through government policies. In Canada, the human rights violations that existed at residential schools led to Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 2008 to 2015. Then the calls to action, the calls to action made recommendations to federal, provincial, municipal governments, churches, and even Indian Act bans on how to change the current policies and practices in order to deal with the imminent damages on indigenous peoples. There are a total of 94 calls to action recommendations. But to me, reconciliation means more than restoring to friendly relations or trying to make amends. It also involves a decolonization process to take back what right, what's rightfully ours. Reconciliation is also a two-way process we have to deal with restoring our power and also to make the other side accountable to correcting the wrongs. I think the Truth and Reconciliation Commission made strong recommendations such as developing curriculum on residential schools and the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and teaching about treaties. The curriculum also made it easier for non-Indigenous people to try and understand about the reconciliation process. For me, employment is also a priority for youth. I'd like to see recommendation 9211 implemented. It states, ensure that Aboriginal peoples have equitable access to jobs, training and education opportunities in corporate sector and that Aboriginal communities gain long-term sustainable benefits from economic development projects. I see this benefiting our people now and in the future. As youth, I see the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the 94 calls to action has heightened recognition on the struggles of our people and that something is being done by both our people and non-Indigenous people. I hope to see the positive changes in my lifetime. I also think the Truth and Reconciliation did not go far enough to address the wrongs that were inflicted on our people since European contact. I know the historical events that depopulated our people on Turtle Island, for instance the deliberate germ warfare on our people, and the deliberate policies and laws that try to eliminate our identity and our beliefs, our values, and which are found in the Indian Act. These are events that should be looked at, recorded, and stated as fact in history. If you want reconciliation or true history, our true history has to be told and the government's made accountable for the damages done. As the first peoples here, and our sovereignty and our self-determination must make it clear to the Canadian government we are self-governing and we do not need the oppressive Indian Act. I think the youth would prefer the colonial administration of our people under the Indian Act to be disbanded. Being under colonial rule goes against our treaties and goes against our independence to be self-ruling. I think we need to embrace our treaties that lays the principles and foundation for our youth. I believe promoting treaty rights in schools, in offices, or in workplaces will embrace reconciliation. An important part about understanding our nations 
who we are and what rights we have is understanding our treaties. Also, the preservation of our treaty territories will ensure our traditions, customs, ceremonies, and families are intact. I believe reconciliation can also restore balance in our communities to live by the traditional teachings of our grandfathers, grandmothers, of equality, love, respect, and honesty. I realize that there is a lot of history to learn on the impacts of colonialism and now reconciliation, not just with the indigenous peoples here in Canada, but for indigenous peoples around the world. To me, reconciliation is a process that involves equal commitment by both nations. Reconciliation is about being able to understand one another, to be able to sit down and not just listen, but feel that hope for a brighter future. I believe that the cause to action is one of the key mechanisms in which reconciliation can move forward. Whether it be Recommendation 48, which calls upon church parties or faith groups to formally comply to the United Nations Declaration on right, Indigenous Rights as a framework for reconciliation, or Recommendation 53 that calls upon Parliament to create a National Reconciliation Council. In order to continue on the path of reconciliation, history also cannot be ignored because the past affects the present. To deny and not recognize the true history of our nations will only in turn distort our path and will mislead our future. As a youth, I've committed myself to the challenge that, challenges that face all of us, now and in the future, such as the lack of education on our histories, our beliefs, customs, and the lack of understanding on decolonization and reconciliation in our schools. I cherish the idea of a place where all people live as one, and peace and harmony with equal opportunity, just as Creator intended. It's an idea that we should all hope to live for and achieve. Miigwech. <laughs>